So, what do you do if you live in a country that doesn't have access to the internet? Well, one option right now is to use a device called Dreamcatcher, which receives data from Othernet on the KU band. Now, Othernet used to be called Outernet, but because of a trademark issue, Outernet rebranded in July 2018 to Othernet. Now, Outernet, as it was called back then, turned on its first public satellite signal on August the 11th, 2014. It was first broadcast over the Galaxy 19 and Hotbird satellites on L-Band. This gave coverage to North America, Europe and parts of the Middle East and North Africa. Now while on L-Band there was a couple of ways to receive this signal. You could use a device called a Lantern which is a solar powered storage unit which created its own hotspot and you could also rig together your own hardware using an RTL SDR dongle and an L-Band patch antenna. Now fast forward to today and the reception of Othernet is now on the KU band being broadcast by SES2 for North America and Astra 3B for Europe. Now in order to receive this signal you will need an Othernet designed device called a Dreamcatcher and an appropriate LMB. Now SES2 is capable of sending a 20 kilobit stream while here in Europe we have a 10 kilobit stream. Now once you have your Dreamcatcher locked onto the other net signal, it will start downloading files to the onboard SD card. The SD card also contains the operating system and at the time of creating this video is called Skylark version 5.7. There is actually another SD card slot available for extra storage. Now the files downloaded contain a whole host of information which covers the latest global news, weather and a Wikipedia section for pre-curated Wikipedia pages. There is even a radio stream which contains content from around the world. One other feature which will appeal to ham radio operators is the ability to receive APRS messages from the APRS network. We'll look into this in a bit more depth shortly. So the whole idea of Othernet is to provide content in an area where access to the internet is not available. Once the hardware is set up and working, anyone with a Wi-Fi enabled device can log onto the Dreamcatcher using its Wi-Fi hotspot and start viewing the downloaded content using Skylark's web-based GUI. Now part of Dreamcatcher's network configuration also allows you to connect it to your local area network by connecting to your router. So you wouldn't need to connect directly to the Dreamcatcher. In this configuration, the Wi-Fi hotspot would not be available and you would need to access the Dreamcatcher through your Wi-Fi network. So with my Dreamcatcher, I've set mine up in the shed that's powered it from a USB power supply. The Wi-Fi dongle is just connected to a little short extension cable that's popped up by the window. And then I've got the coax which runs off to the dish which is in the garden. So outside, I've got my dish to set up here on a tripod. And this is an 85 centimeter sort of oval type dish. Um, it's actually pointing directly at the satellite, but the reason why that I'm using such a big dish is because where I'm located, I have a whole host of trees in the way, which is pretty terrible for my location. So uh, I'm looking forward to winter when all those leaves drop off and uh, I can uh, start receiving signals a bit stronger. But in theory, you should actually be able to receive this with just the LMB. And in certain coverage areas, you can literally just point the LMB directly at the other net satellite and you should be able to receive it perfectly well. So let's go and take a look at the Skylark software. So once we've got it all installed and uh, set up, we need to go over to our browser and type in the IP address of your Othernet board. So you can just log in as guest, but I'm gonna log in as Othernet and Othernet, click login. And then once you're logged in, you're gonna see this screen. Over here on the left-hand side, there's like a little blue icon. If you click it, it will actually show us all of the available applications which are already installed on Skylark. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to Tuner because this is where I wanna just check to make sure that I've got an actual lock. So I'm gonna to go to Status here. And this tuner window on the status, it gives us some great information. So it tells us which current stream we have. So uh, at the moment we've got a file stream. Uh, it gives us our signal to noise ratio, tells us whether we're locked on, but well, obviously you want this to be yes. And it gives us our RSSI in DBM. There's some other useful information here as well. Um, the bottom section here it says transfers. So this will actually show you which file is currently downloading. 
Obviously the last transfer file, it says complete. Now one thing to notice here, you've got audio bitrate. At the moment this says zero. Now I'd imagine that's because I'm in Europe and I believe that because we only have 10 kilobit a stream in Europe, it will only send files or audio. It's either one or the other. Unlike I think in the States and the USA where you have 20 kilobits, um, you're able to do files and audio at the same time. So at the moment it's in a file stream, so we've got no audio there at the moment. So let's go ahead and have a look at see what features we get on Skylark. So let's go from left to right. So first thing is uh, it's got an about dialog. This is uh, just got some links here to the uh, forums. Obviously they're only going to work if you connect us to the internet. Uh, we then have a calculator. Uh, we then got file manager. Uh, everything that uh, that gets downloaded from the satellite comes into the downloads folder. You can see here I've got a few different uh, folders. Got app, amateur radio, apps, news, weather, Wikipedia. We'll uh, we'll go into this uh, shortly. Uh, over then we've got preview. So this allows us to view documents. Uh, we've then got textpad. We can then use textpad to create some text. So this is, and uh, you know it can just you can use it as a text editor, and you can you know save save that. But then we've got log viewer. So this is quite interesting. If you're setting up for the first time, you want to open this up. Go to diagnostics and look down the bottom to make sure you've got things like the bias T is configured correctly, uh, the LMB is power is configured, and the LMB is actually detected as well. It's quite useful. But let's get into some of the fun stuff, shall we? Okay, so here we've got messages. Now this is really cool. What this does is this picks up any APRS messages that's sent on the APRS network that if in the body of the message contains the word outnet, so O-U-T-N-E-T, -E it will actually get pushed to here. Let's have a look at an example of that. So what I'm going to do is just use an application called APRS TX on my iPhone. This is actually an application that I wrote and you can go and purchase it if you want to from the App Store. So I'm going to send a message to myself uh, using this software. Now what it's going to do, it's going to uh, send the message to the APRS IS servers. And because I'm going to put the word outlet uh, in the body part of the message, it will actually get picked up and sent up to outnet and then pushed out to all of the outnet receivers so look at this i'm sending it to m0dqw-5 and we're going to say test message to outnet and then what we're going to do we're going to send that and then we go back over to the outnet message inbox and see if we got it there okay so that's sent so let's take a quick look at the messages now and see if it's there. And there we go. This is uh, this is the message that I just sent uh, from my uh, application on the iOS app. Obviously, it will work as well if you're sending an RF message as well. Um, uh, as long as it gets into the APRS network and contains the word outnet, it will make its way up to this message inbox. So I think that's pretty cool. Now, what we also have here is news. Now, this is actually quite interesting. So we have quite a few different channels here. So we have Al Jazeera English, Atlas, BBC Arabic, Chinese, BBC News Worldwide. We have some others here, some German, some breaking news, some sports, Voice of America in English, World News. It looks like some other sort of Arabic uh, news channels here. Let's take a look at BBC News World. And uh, as you can see here, this is like the latest articles. It gives us a date of when these articles were, were, were downloaded. So if you want to view one, you just click on the article itself. It even has images and then it has text. So it has the whole information here about the news article. So I think that's a really useful thing. You know, if you're in the middle of nowhere and you don't have any internet access, then something like this could be your only lifeline to what's going on in the world. And then we've got weather. Let's take a look at weather. And here we go, look at this. This is how cool is this? Right, I'm just gonna go over to the, where the UK is. I'm just gonna use my mouse wheel to zoom in to the UK and, uh, and watch this. <laughs> so how cool is that? So this is giving us, I believe, our wind. Let's try changing the mode to ocean. K 
currents. Let's see if this works. And there we go. So this is the currents around. So you can see it's a bit kind of swirly over there somewhere. It's uh, of course a little bit hectic going on over here. Okay, so that's weather. Uh, let's have a look at what's new. So what this does it actually contains um, a list in sort of uh, in the right order of what was last updated. So you can actually go down go down the list and have a look to see okay so we had some new packets come in at 10 to 4 here then some at quarter to 4 uh, we had some looks like some Arabic news come in so one of the last things on here is Wikipedia so if we just open Wikipedia and what we'll see is that it's downloaded some documents from Wikipedia that we can go ahead and educate ourselves on I think this is pretty cool I mean, you're getting some of this kind of information for free, uh, no internet, and you can literally just go ahead and have a read of some of this information to, uh, you know, educate yourself further or etc. So I mentioned earlier that you can also receive radio, which is broadcast uh, from other net. So let's, uh, let's take a listen to see what kind of content that we're receiving via the radio stream. The transparency and better governance. However, he says, the report shows Jamie's successor, President Adam Abaro, has allowed some of the same practices. Gambia was the apple in the eyes of the world. Everybody like the Gambia, donors volunteered to help the Gambia to move forward. What are we seeing? That this government is not taking it seriously. That is mismanaging the funds that you have a group of cronies that share our resources. Among the problems the auditors found in 2018, the office of the president ordered the Gambia Post Authority to pay $100,000 for carpets to be installed at the Grand Ten at the State House. Now obviously the content of the radio station will change throughout the day. I believe they have different schedules that uh, go on at different times of the day. So I think this is quite cool. You know, if you're in the middle of nowhere, no internet, no radio waves, and uh, you know, you've got your dream catcher, an LMB and some kind of device that you can connect to it, then you know, you can listen to the radio, you can browse documents that's been downloaded from the internet. And uh, all of the content is actually curated by, uh, by the team at Othernet. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you fancy purchasing one of these, I believe there's a special offer at the moment, so uh, I'll leave a link down in the description to their website. I uh, also want to say a massive thank you to all my current patrons. You guys support the channel and I would appreciate that. If you want to get involved, you can go and have a look at the link in the description. Until the next video guys, you take care and we'll see you in the next one.